The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers and Nodulator XL. So we are here with Steve Shirtless, professor at the University of Saskatchewan, and we're in a field of lentils. Steve, what is going on in this field? Well, here, well, this is a, these are some research plots. We do a lot of research here at the University of Saskatchewan uh, on uh, lentil agronomy. And uh, one, of the, one of the things we're looking at, although this experiment isn't for that, uh, one yet because it isn't out of the ground yet, but we're looking at the effect of lentil seeding rate on lentil yield and disease development. But I think today we're talking about a lot of lentil emergence and seeding rates and stuff like that. So we decided to come out here to have a look at some plants coming out of the ground and kind of assess what's really happening. Yeah, so um, let's start with field prep. What what should you do to prepare a field for lentils? Well, if you're a no-till farmer, uh, really nothing to the soil. I guess the key thing, the key thing there is you want to make sure that your winter annuals are managed, your winter annual weeds are controlled the, the year before. You know, come out there with a good burn off that you can, uh, that's not going to have any residual effect on the lentils and plant them in there and try to get them as, a, as good a seed bed as possible. Lentils are, are, are a, rel a pretty easy crop to seed because you can seed them fairly deep. They've got fairly large seeds, most of them. Even the ones that we say have small seeds are still pretty large. So they're pretty easy to get out of the ground, you know, as long as you seed them into good moisture. So what kind of plant population should we look at targeting? Well, you know, that's, we've been looking at that a lot. The traditional, the traditional recommendation was to target about 120 or 130 plants per meter squared. That's about 12 plants per square foot. And what we're starting to find out is that in some lentil classes that that's probably too low. We're seeing optimal yields and optimal return at uh, much higher plant densities than that. So yeah. how would you assess it just coming out to this field? Well, you know, you this one, uh, this you know, w one thing you can do is this one is, uh, it's seeded on 12 inch rows, of which a lot of producers will have air seeders like that. So if you just count how many plants are growing in one linear foot, you, you got a pretty good estimate of how many plants are growing per square foot out there, you know. So, you know, for example, you know, my, my, my foot is, I have about a size 12 or 13 foot. So if we look here, we can see that we have how many lentil plants? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So we probably have about, if this, if all the other rows were the same, we probably have about 180 lentil plants per square foot. And what we found in our research is that this is about the optimum stand for yield that you're going to get. How late is too late to seed lentils? Well, you know, lentils like, well, that, the ultimate decision to that is usually dictated by crop insurance and that varies per area. But lentils are like almost every crop except our warm season crops in Western Canada and that the later you leave it, the lower your yield potential gets. You know, essentially with, uh, with uh, in Western Canada, we have such a short growing season and we're often moisture limited. So the sooner you can get your plants into the ground, uh, it does two things. The first thing it does is that by seeding early is that you have more access to more water because the plants, uh, because there's less evaporation earlier in the growing season than there is later. So like the hot dry weather like we're having right now, if you're just seeding into that, that moisture that is lost now isn't available to plants. But if we have these lentils growing, they're using moisture instead of all of it just being lost to evaporation up in the sky. And the second thing that happens is that the crops are growing in a cooler part of the year. And that comes in especially important uh, for flowering. I, I in lentils, I don't think it's as big of issues, but in some crops like peas, peas, canola, and uh, peas, canola, well, peas and canola for sure, and oat, I was gonna say, heat during flowering can really reduce seed set and reduce your yield a lot. So that seeding early is, with, with the exception of warm season crops like soybean and corn, uh, and to some extent chickpea, is almost always a good idea. Yeah. And if we're, we're talking moisture anyway, what should we be looking at for seeding depth? Uh, seeding depth, you know, as long as with most pulse crops, you, you, uh, you know, a couple, 
two inches deep is good, but you want to make sure they're into good moisture, especially uh, especially if you're growing larger seed sizes of lentils or growing some of the larger pulses like peas or chickpeas, would they, they need a fair bit of moisture to swell them and to actually germinate them. So if you're just kind of laying them on top or into a little bit of moisture, that's not always going to get you, give you enough, uh, enough moisture for germination, like especially in a year like we've had this year. Like we seeded these into, the soil was actually too wet when we seeded these and you can see already, you know, we're dry, you know, we've got you know, a good inch and a half or two inches of dry ground here already. So it's dried down in the profile a little bit. So it's, uh, so you have, in pulses generally, the biggest seeding problem is seeding too shallow. Whereas opposed, that's the exact opposite of a crop like canola, where the biggest problem used to be farmers seeding them too deep. I think every, that message has gotten out pretty well now. But uh, in pulses, it's hard to seed them too deep. Maybe in the really small lentil classes you could get too deep, but they have a lot of energy to get up. One thing we didn't do out here that most producers would do would roll their lentils. It's just, we, it's part of the protocol for this one, but often farmers will roll them to do that. There's an old myth out there that rolling can do something to the lentils by uh, help them flower, and just like that. There's no evidence that that's true. The reason that, the reason that you roll lentils is simply to smooth out the lumps so that you can uh, so that you can combine closer to the ground and not take a bunch of rocks and dirt into your combine messing up the sample. So that's that's about it. <laughs>